Will you look into the mirror? What will I see? attacks are back on the menu, boys! Nerdlotic.com That's strange. It feels like I was just talking about this subject. Oh yeah, with Disney Star Wars. Except this time we have some pop culture inception going on with author George R. R. Martin going after toxic fandom in The Lord of the Rings, Star Trek, Disney Star Wars, and of course with his own property, Game of Thrones in particular, Season 8, while also talking about the competing show against the Rings of Power, House of the Dragon. And yes, there's an Empire article to go along with those covers, which we are going to talk about, as well as some possible spoilers from episode two of the rings of power and the answer to one of our biggest questions i'll give you a hint you're not gonna like it from the access media rag known as the independent george rr R. martin i don't understand how people can come to hate so much something that they once loved where do i even begin oh i remember multinational billion dollar corporation purchases beloved intellectual property beloved intellectual property is valuable because it comes with a built-in revenue stream known as a fan base what I'm going to get! Whatever I want, I have to get! Disconnected elites who run multinational billion-dollar corporation hire subpar activist talent who hitch their political wagons onto something more popular because they can't create it on their own. Suddenly, the thing you know better than this activist talent and the disassociated elitists who run the multi-billion dollar corporation start using language like, the thing you love needs to appeal to a larger global audience. The thing you love needs to reflect the world of today. The thing you love won't be the thing you love that you remember. The thing you love needs to be more accessible and relatable. You respond by saying the thing we love has always appealed to a giant global audience, has always been relatable and accessible. It's always been the thing we remember because we know it better than you do. We're the ones who made the thing we love worth the hundreds of millions of dollars that you paid to get it. Then the detached elites who run the multi-billion dollar corporation along with the subpar hack activist creatives along with the adult pretenders call you a bigot. Then the thing you love doesn't love you. Yes! What's next? But you can't do this to me. You know how much I sacrifice? Can't imagine why somebody would get pissed off about that. Now let's get back to George briefly. Now this is largely a fluff piece about House of the Dragon, the other fantasy series that will be airing around the same time as the Rings of Power. And I'll say right now, it's probably going to be better. Just not sure how many people are going to care because Game of Thrones season six, seven, and eight were complete disasters and he never finished the Winds of Winter. How's the book going, George? So after the first paragraph of this fluff piece about House of the Dragon, what did they talk about? You guessed it, toxic fandom. The runaway success of Game of Thrones made Martin rich beyond even his wildest fever dreams of a lifelong science fiction writer, but it's his first-hand experience with the viciousness of a particular type of hyper-online fan that's left him uncharacteristically stumped. Really, George, I don't understand how people can come to hate so much something that they once loved, he says, and I gave you an explanation why that happens. If you don't like a show, don't watch it. How has everything become so toxic? And unfortunately of late, this has been the general attitude of the creative and their lapdogs in the access media. I mean, George doesn't have any kids, but I did meet him once on the set of the Orville back in early 2021, and he was followed around by no less than nine people that he referred to as minions. You weird, buddy. You're weird. By the way, on that tour, I was the only person whose hand he didn't shake. What a bitch. Well, just as you are free to say whatever the hell you want in an interview or on your not a blog while you're not writing wins a winner, we're free to say whatever the hell we want to. And welcome to the 21st century. We are. The author is wise enough not to take any of the online abuse he suffers too personally. Yeah, that's probably a smart move. After all, the same toxicity seems to infect the discourse around many of the world's most popular stories. The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, 
It's not a popular story yet, and you're just about to say that right now. Isn't even out yet, so how could it be popular? Oh, it's popular because it's built in. Because an author named J.R.R. Tolkien, by the way, George R. R. Martin is J.R.R. Tolkien's bitch, meticulously created the secondary world while he raised a family, while he worked another job, unlike George R. R. Martin. Yes, the fans are very protective of him. But if you follow what's going on online, the controversy about it is like World War II. They're dropping atomic bombs on each other, he says incredulously, of the fans who howl about any perceived deviation from the source material. You hear controversies about some of the Marvel shows and the Marvel movies, certainly about the DC characters. It used to be if you were a fan of Star Trek, you like Star Trek. Yeah, because Star Trek used to be good and it no longer is Star Trek. Now it seems like half the people who call themselves Star Trek fans hate Star Trek. Yeah, because it sucks. And the Star Wars fans hate Disney Star Wars. And the Tolkien fans hate the Rings of Power. What the hell? Now maybe it's because it's changing. But as a writer, you go crazy if you didn't change it somehow. You want to tell new stories, not to tell the same stories over and over again, or in George's case, not finish a story. To be fair, George did acknowledge that there's two sides to this, so let's flip this question around. Why do so many TikTokers and influencers and supposed Tolkien scholars and professors, members of the Tolkien Society, hate the beloved professor so much that they need to see his original life's work change? I'm very also cautious about saying if a work will remain true to the spirit of an author or not, because at the end of the day, Tolkien died in the 70s. So it's up to us to basically step our game up and see how his works can respond through the world that they created to the challenges of today. When you get a, a writer who is hired to do an adaptation but is not familiar with the material, or doesn't, in some cases, they hire people who don't even like the original material. And you have language in Hollywood, I'm going to make it my own. I have my own vision for this and that sort of thing. If I go to see The Great Gatsby, I don't want someone's take on The Great Gatsby. I don't want them to make <laughs> it their own. I want Scott Fitzgerald brought to life in front of my face. Yeah. I want Daisy and yeah. Tom and Gatsby and the Roaring Twenties. Uh, and you don't always get that. Make up your mind and I'll make your mind. And Amazon's rollout of Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, again, has been nothing short of a PR disaster. Probably the worst we've ever seen. With things like warrior man-spreading Galadriel. My balls. I don't want my balls sticking to my legs. Taking a character that was the pinnacle of feminine energy and the greatest of the female elves and turning her into a dude. I think the biological female Melanie Mack says it best. I'll never understand why Hollywood thinks making women act like men is supposed to be an empowering thing for us. So here we have warrior Galadriel sitting like a dude with the biggest sword hilt I've ever seen and a knife right in her crotch area. I wonder what they're trying to tell us. And I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. And I can hear the shills justifying this now. Tolkien wasn't specific about Galadriel not having balls. She might actually sit like this. From Empire, now the Lord of the Rings is about to change the game all over again with the Rings of Power setting fantasy back 20 years, a streaming series that takes the world you love and brings it back to the screen just not quite as you remember. There we go. And as I've said in the past, bad reboot disciples like J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay are very good at one thing, the art of bullshit. Let me amend that to the studios, but not to you and I. From Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power doesn't try to compete with Peter Jackson's trilogy or Game of Thrones. Let's see if I can get through this. You can psych yourself out in keeping up with the Joneses, but one of the mantras on this was to go back to the source material. McKay explains, what would Tolkien do? None of this! What source material? You mean from The Return of the King? This? <laughs> That's five supposed planned seasoned based on 157 pages, in this printing anyway, of appendices. Lenny Henry, who plays Harfoot Sadik Burroughs in Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. We're the traditional Tolkien little guy, are you? So when showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay first set out to tell the story in the Hobbit-free second age of Middle-earth for Prime Video's streaming series, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, 
or DOA, you can just call it that. Peter Jackson's films and the original novels are set thousands of years later in the Third Age. They were faced with a conundrum. How do you conjure the world without featuring its most notable inhabitants? By focusing on the characters that were actually in the appendices, and as short as they are, there is no shortage of characters. Nope, these hacks are going to make up more characters. The answer was the Harfoots, beings who feature in the original Tolkien lore as the Hobbit's predecessors. No, they're just Hobbits. There are three kinds of Hobbits. Stores, Fallowhides and Harfoots. These lot have those famous furry feet and short stature, but they haven't settled in the Shire yet. Oh, and one of them by the name of Sadik Burroughs, a made-up hobbit name for a Harfoot that's a hobbit, not a predecessor to one, played by none other than Lenny Henry, and wait till you hear what he has to say. Woohoo! We're a nomadic tribe moving with the weather and the fertility of the crops. We have big caravans on wooden wheels and we're very good at hiding things because humans are much bigger than us and bring trouble, Henry tells Empire of the Harfoot way of life. And while they're not exactly hobbits, no, they're actually hobbits, they'll still be playing hobbit-like roles in the wider tale. We're the traditional Tolkien little guy, explains Henry. Traditionally, the little people in this world provide comedy but also get to be incredibly brave. You're going to see us run the full gamut of emotions and actions in this adventure really wow well that sounds compelling an adult pretender named lenny henry is going to play a character that's going to show emotion and memorize lines and do things for henry taking on the role of sadik burroughs not only allowed him to play in the fantasy genre that he loves it also offered an opportunity to help shift the needle on a world that previously hasn't tended to feature people of color in prominent rolls what if you can't see it you can't be it he says finally in this show kids are going to see people of color taking up space in the center of a fantasy series we're very visible in this world and that's very exciting the harfoot's journey is about to begin you think kids are going to be watching this show, Lenny? Well, I hope you take time to tell all the kiddies out there about the Hobbit and Elven racial cleansing that happens before the Third Age. But we know we're really not talking about kids. We're talking about superfan influencers like the ones Amazon picked out who never read Lord of the Rings or maybe watched half the movies while they were on their phone. But they made it very clear this isn't going to be anything like Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings or J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. And based on what I know from the second episode and what character doesn't show up in the first two and isn't even even mentioned it's pretty clear before we get to that let's take a look at some of the new images of course we have man spreading warrior galadriel then we have the harfoots there's lenny henry's sadic burrow and i saw this tweet today and chef's kiss and then there's the dwarves <laughs> oh shit <laughs> i'm not gonna say anything Yes, it looks like Nick Ricada and Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> then we have a snow troll, which looks pretty good. And then we have a made-up character on a made-up tower in made-up Tolkien. We finally get a look at Kella Brimbor, Noldorian prince, last in the line of the House of Feanor. He ruled Oregion and forged the three elven rings of power, Phyla, Narya, and Nenya. And in this preview from Empire, he looks like a lesbian school mom. <laughs> Meet the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power's pivotal elf, Celebrimbor. He's an elven smith who was manipulated into helping create the Rings of Power. We're excited to be bringing him to Middle-earth. He's very mysterious. The character comes directly from Tolkien's extensive legendarium. The one Amazon largely doesn't have the rights to, and has been brought to the screen before, if not so faithfully in the Shadow of Mordor and in the Shadow of War video games. And this is supposed to be faithful? Why don't the elves have long hair? Why don't they look ethereal? Why do they look so human? Well, according to showrunner Patrick McKay, we have Hobbit adjacent, and now we have Elf adjacent. But the show clearly isn't even going to be Tolkien adjacent. No, we're not done with Empire yet. Morphin Clark on The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power's Warrior Galadriel. She still has a lot to learn. That sense of outdoorsiness, what the hell are we doing to our language, hints at a more active incarnation of Galadriel, Warrior Galadriel, one who, according to the actor, still has a lot to learn even after thousands of years. Through the course of the show, I had to find that balance between someone who has got an element of the eternal but hasn't yet seen it all in thousands of years. Don't expect the same character that you meet later on. Well, if you've read Tolkien, I wouldn't expect anything to be the same, including Warrior Galadriel. But we do have confirmation of one thing. 
Celeborn, Galadriel's husband, the man who traveled with Galadriel to Linden at the beginning of the Second Age, according to Tolkien, isn't mentioned at all in the first two episodes. For every mystery, there is someone somewhere who knows the truth. Perhaps that someone was watching. Have you seen this elf? And might not pop up for most of the series, which leads me to believe one of two things. Celeborn's either going to be greatly diminished or dead. And the explanation from the showrunners will probably be we wouldn't want to rob warrior Galadriel of her agency. We also have the original character, guess who's coming to Second Breakfast, Bronwyn, killing an orc either by herself or with her son Theo. The guy who falls from the sky is indeed a wizard, but he can't speak. It's Nori who finds him and he needs to be taken somewhere. Elrond is not only going to travel to Oregion early to meet Celebrimbor, he's going to go to Moria and meet Prince Durin IV and Disa. All this and that contrived modern writing that has become a staple of modern Hollywood. In other words, modernity wrapped in a loose Tolkien skin. So now we know why Amazon has been reluctant to show us very much until now. Because like Disney Star Wars with Kenobi, they know they have a giant turd on their hands and there's nothing they can do about it. And I don't think there's anything that illustrates more how backwards we've gone in modern storytelling and modern cinema with these contrasts. Peter Jackson's elves versus the Rings of Power elves. So to get this straight, Amazon paid hundreds of millions of dollars to the Tolkien estate to get that built-in audience that they decided to immediately alienate. To bypass us for the normies who love the Peter Jackson trilogy that Amazon is now trying to distance itself from. And when this intersectional feminist Lord of the Rings inevitably fails, of course it'll be the fans' fault. Again, I would love nothing more than to cover a good Lord of the Rings series on this channel. It would be great, but that's not going to happen. So instead, going to break out my popcorn and kick back and watch possibly the biggest flop in history. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. Nerderotic.com. Please subscribe.